Welcome to an Empower PL video tutorial. We're going to be looking at Google Form settings. Once your form is ready to go, you've jazzed it up with some images, some color choices, spots, all your questions are in there. Now you're ready to send this out. But before you send it, you want to make sure that you have customized uh, some settings that dictate how this form is gonna behave and how your users interact with your form. So up here at the top right-hand side, next to the purple blue button that says send, we're gonna click on the gear. This is our settings. So we're gonna click on that and it's gonna open up a window that gives us several different options for customization. You'll notice up at the top, the very first thing it defaults to is general. And then we have presentation and quizzes as additional tabs. Let's start with the first one. The very first thing it says, okay, do you want to collect email addresses? Let's say this was a quiz that I'm sending out to my students and I want to be able to know who has responded. Requiring the student to actually have to log into their Google account and therefore if I select this, it will automatically collect their email address. Now, this doesn't have to be just with student and Google accounts within your school. This would collect even addresses where others are having to log in, let's say from another school or perhaps uh, presenters that are presenting in your conference and these presenters are located you know, all over the United States. If you select collect email addresses, when those people log in to their Google accounts to be able to fill out your form, you're gonna automatically collect that email address. So you can actually select that. You can decide whether or not you want to uh, collect uh, people's email addresses. The next option is require sign-in. You can require uh, where people have to actually sign in to complete your form. And if so, you can limit that to only one response, for example. So this would be uh, perhaps like an actual exam that you're having your students take and you don't want them to take it twice. You only want them to take it that one time. You also don't wanna allow other students to be able to log in with other student accounts to be able to see those test questions. And this would limit um, that person from being able to actually submit more than one time. Uh, the other additional things you have here are respondents can do what? Um, can they edit after they submit? So in other words, what happens here is if you select this, is it uh, after I hit the submit button, it leaves my answer choices on the screen where I can actually make other selections to be able to uh, then submit again if, if I need to um, do that because maybe I caught a mistake. Uh, the other thing you see here, it says see summary uh, charts and text responses. In the summary results, once people start responding to your maybe poll or questions, et cetera, I can choose to allow my end users to see results. So for example, if I do a really quick poll uh, and maybe it's asking the entire you know, uh, group within my workshop, um, what is your opinion on the following? And it's a poll question, it's got three, you know, three answer choices. Well, if I select this button here, after I submit my uh, response, I would be able to see the graph that shows, you know, where where are we voting? Like, what does that look like so far? And it would it would show me uh, those responses in that in that way. So that's really nice. Uh, and then you'll see another option here if you are uh, asking a question uh, that has an upload file type, you can certainly. Uh, limit the size here. You've got some options here. You can, of course, do this within the question um, itself as well. Um, okay, so let's take a look at, um, uh, I'm going to cancel here and we're going to go and see a couple of additional things that uh, we also want to see once people um, make these choices. So for example, let me say collect email addresses and see summary um, uh, chart and text responses. Um, okay, so before I actually, I'm gonna click on save. Uh, and before I actually show you what that looks like, let's just go ahead and take a look at presentation and quizzes up here at the top. If you were, uh, let's say, creating a form that has, uh, you know, 30 questions, you might want it to uh, break it up into sections and um, you can show the end user progress bar, which allows them to see, okay, I'm on question 10 of 25 or what have you. You can also shuffle the question order if it is a quiz and you don't want, you know, kids looking over their shoulders to see what is the person next to me put for answer choice two. Well, it's likely they're going to have a different question to begin with if you've shuffled the question order. Um, you can also allow it to see uh, a link to submit another response. I like to use this when I'm doing 
a poll with a large group of people and perhaps not everyone has a device to be able to answer questions. They can share devices. Therefore, I do want them to be able to see a link to submit another response because when they hand that device over to the next person, that person just clicks on that link to submit another response and then they fill it out. So that's really nice to have that. Down here, confirmation, by default, it'll say your response, your response has been recorded, but perhaps my questionnaire is not about you know responses so much, but maybe I'm trying to say something like, you know, thank you for completing this form. Um, we will follow up soon. You know, so I can add additional information um, after they hit that submit button. This is the message they're gonna see. And then lastly, under quizzes, um, if this was a quiz, you can certainly make this a quiz and then begin to make some choices based off of what you want to do uh, as far as the prompts that your end user, your students would be able to see. So if this is a quiz. Um, you can, there's a couple options here for grades. Uh, immediately after each submission, your students would be able to see that or later after manual review, meaning that you're actually going in uh, to make those choices on the back end. Um, and then respondents, uh, the people who filled out, your students who filled out your quiz, um, they can see maybe the questions they've missed, also questions they've gotten correct. So you can make those choices there as well. Now, this is not a quiz, so I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. And let's go ahead and go to a form. So I've already pre-populated a form here with information. We're ready to hit the submit button. Um, but I do want to show you uh, up here at the very top, it says the name and uh, photo associated with your Google account will be recorded. Remember, we selected that option to select, to collect email addresses. So that it's already telling me up here at the top and it will let your users know you are collecting their email accounts. All right, down here at the bottom, once again, we're gonna hit submit because we've already completed this uh, form because I wanna show you, um, Oh, some questions still need attention. Okay, so it didn't quite capture all of these. Uh, okay, let's do that. Oh, okay. I'm wondering if, okay, I think we're good now. I was wondering if, okay, there. Because it had it was auto capturing my email, I was wondering if if it was picking up on the fact that I had a different email address that I was using just as a test, but no, it didn't. So we're good to go. Okay, so let's take a look here um, at some of the things that we just finished customizing. So again, here's my custom message that you saw me type in earlier. Thank you for completing this form. We will follow up soon. Remember, we also talked about seeing um, the previous responses so we could see if it was a poll and you want your end users to be able to see uh, any type of, of end result, it would pull them up in here in this way. So I, as the end user, would be able to see, oh, you know, who's voting for what, you know, uh, flavor of ice cream and, you know, uh, what soft drink is in the lead, you know, things like that, right? And then lastly, the other thing we talked about was the ability to submit another response via a link that pops up. So again, if you've selected that option, that's gonna pop up here as an option for your end user. So those are some extra things to definitely consider before you send out your form to your end users. Make the choices that fit your needs best. Once you're done, now you're ready to actually send your form.